Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about the index of square matrix. The index of square matrix A of size n by n denoted by end of A is the least non-negative integer k such that the rank of A to the power k is equal to the rank of A to the power k plus 1. If k is equal to 0, we define A to the 0 to be the identity matrix of size n by n. If A is an invertible matrix, then the rank of A, which is the rank of A to the power 1, this is n, and the rank of a to the power zero, which is identity, is also equal to n. This equality is satisfied with k equal to zero. If a is non-singular, if a is an invertible square matrix, then its index is equal to zero. If a is singular, then the index is strictly greater than zero. Let's try to understand the meaning of this definition here by investigating what happens to the column space or the range and the null space of a matrix A as we raise it to the power k. If x is in the range of a to the power k, there exists a vector y such that a to the k times y is equal to x. x being in the column space of a to the power k means that x can be written as a linear combination of the columns of a to the power k. Take this a to the power k and assuming that k is a strictly positive integer, we can split it into a to the k minus 1 and a. We can write down this as a to the k minus 1 and then here we put a y and this is equal to x. This is a column vector. This is a to the k minus 1. We can write down x as a to the k minus 1 times a vector. x is in the range of a to the k minus 1. The conclusion is that if x is in the range of a to the power k, x must be in the range of a to the k minus 1. Every vector in this subspace is in that subspace. The range of a to the power k is a subset of the range of a to the k minus 1 or the range of a to the k minus 1 contains the range of a to the power k. We can think of the column space or the range of the matrix as shrinking. So we start with a range, so the range of a to the power 0, which is the range of identity, that's basically the n-dimensional space, contains the range of a to the power 1, which contains the range of a square, which contains the range of a to the power 3, and so forth. The range is the same or is shrinking as we raise the matrix to higher powers. What about the null space? If x is living in the null space of a to the k minus 1, a to the k minus 1 times x is the all zero vector. Multiply both sides of this equation by a. We get that a to the k times x is a times the all zero vector, which is again the all zero vector. a to the k x is equal to the all zero vector. x is in the null space of a to the k. We started with a vector in the null space of a to the k minus 1. The vector is also in the null space of a to the k. The null space of a to the k minus 1 is contained, is a subset of the null space of a to the k. The null space of identity, which is just the all zero vector, is a subset of the null space of a to the power 1, which is a subset of the null space of a squared, which is a subset of the null space of a cubed, and so forth. The null space remains the same, or it grows as we raise a to successively higher powers. Let's focus on the null spaces. If we have this type of inclusion, then the dimension of the null space of a to the zero, this is zero because again the null space of a to the zero is the null space of identity, which is just the old zero vector. The dimension of this null space, which is equal to zero, is less than or equal to the dimension of the null space of a, less than or equal to the dimension of the null space of a squared, and so on. Can we have strict inequalities? Can we have the null space of a to the zero strictly contained in the null space of a, strictly contained in the null space of a squared? By saying this, I mean that the null space of A contains a vector that is not in the null space of A to the power 0, and the null space of A squared contains a vector that is not in the null space of A. If this is the case, then the dimensions are strictly increasing. The dimension of the null space of A to the power 0, that's 0. Now, the dimension of the null space of A must be greater than or equal to 1, and the dimension of the null space of A squared must be greater than or equal to 2 because the dimension of the null space of A squared must be strictly greater than the dimension of the null space of A. If this has a minimum value of 1, then the dimension of the null space of A squared has a minimum value of 2. And we can proceed to say that the dimension of the null space of A to the power n plus 1 is greater than or equal to n plus 1, which is strictly greater than n. But this is problematic. Note that we are talking about a square matrix of size n by n a to the power n plus 1 is still an n by n matrix, and the dimension of its null space is n or less. It cannot be strictly greater than n. We cannot have the dimensions of the null spaces strictly increasing. 
we must have an equality somewhere. Our conclusion is that for some value of k less than or equal to n, the null space of a to the k is equal to the null space of a to the power k plus 1. These two subspaces are the same and the dimensions are equal. By the rank nullity theorem, the dimension of the null space is the number of columns, which is n minus the rank. The dimension of the null spaces being equal implies that the rank of a to the k is equal to the rank of a to the k plus one. We want to show next that once we get equality, it remains forever. If the range of a to the v is equal to the range of a to the v plus one, then the range of a to the v plus one is equal to the range of a to the v plus two. This is very relevant to the definition of the index of the matrix. The index is the least non-negative integer k such that the rank of a to the k is equal to the rank of a to the k plus one. And we know that the range of a to the k contains the range of a to the k plus one. So this means that the range of a to the k is equal to the range of a to the k plus one. A question that arises is what will happen next? Is the range of a to the k plus one equal to the range of a to the k plus two? Or it can strictly contain the range of a to the k plus two. We will show now that Yes, the ranges will remain the same and also the null spaces once we get our first equality. Let's recap what is going on. We have the range of a to the zero. It may strictly contain the range of a to the one, which may strictly contain the range of a to the two. But let's say that the range of a squared is equal to the range of a cubed. Now, this will be, as we will see, equal to the range of a to the four, equal to the range of a to the five, and so forth. The null space of a to the zero can be a strict subset of the null space of a to the one, which can be a strict subset of the null space of a squared. Then if the null space of a squared is equal to the null space of a cubed, this will also be the same as the null space of a to the four and so on. So let's prove this. Our starting point is that we got equality of the range of a to the power v and the range of a to the power v plus one. Note that by definition, we are sure that this will happen when v is the index of the matrix a. Suppose that x is in the range of a to the v plus 1. Then there exists vector y such that a to the v plus 1 times y will give us the vector x. Rewrite this as a times a to the v y. And this is equal to x. The vector a to the v y is a linear combination of the columns of a to the v. It's a vector that is in the range of a to the v. By assumption, the range of a to the v is the range of a to the v plus 1. This is given. If we know that there is a vector in the range of a to the v, it must also be in the range of a to the v plus one. There exists a vector z such that a to the v plus one times z will give us this vector a to the v y. We have this equation a times a to the v y is equal to x. Now a to the v y is equal to a to the v plus one times z, and this is equal to x. Then a to the v plus two z is equal to x. We can write down column the vector x as a to the v plus 2 times this vector z. x is in the column the space of a to the v plus 2. Our starting point was a vector in the column the space or range of a to the v plus 1. By this assumption, the vector is guaranteed to be in the range of a to the v plus 2. The range of a to the v plus 1 is contained in the range of a to the power v plus 2 if we have this. But generally speaking, the range remains the same or is shrinking. So the range of a to the v plus one contains the range of a to the v plus two. Then these ranges of a to the v plus one and of a to the v plus two must be identically the same. We started by saying that the range of a to the v is the range of a to the v plus one. We have shown that the range of a to the v plus one is equal to the range of a to the v plus two. This equality will continue. This equality here by definition is true when v is equal to k, the index of matrix A. Now, it is true for every v greater than or equal to k. If the ranges stop shrinking, and because it's always the case that the dimension of the range of A to the j, this is the rank of A to the j, plus the dimension of the null space of A to the j, this is a constant equal to n, the number of columns of matrix A. Because the ranges are no longer shrinking, then the dimensions remain the same. By the rank nullity theorem, the dimensions of the null spaces remain the same. But the null spaces obey the inclusion that the null space of A to the J is 
contained in the null space of a to the j plus one. If these two guys have the same dimension, then actually they are the same. The ranges stop shrinking, and at the same time, the null spaces stop growing. This is what we have for a square n by n matrix regarding the range and the null space as we raise the matrix to higher and higher powers. Let's investigate something else that is peculiar to the index of A. Take vector x to be in the intersection of the range of A to the power k and the null space of A to the power k. Because x is in this intersection, x is in the null space, and A to the k times x is the O0 vector. x is also in the range of A to the k. There exists vector y such that A to the k y is equal to x. Take this, multiply both sides by A to the power k. We get a to the power 2k times y is equal to a to the power kx, but this is the all zero vector because x is in the null space of a to the k. Then y is in the null space of a to the power 2k. But we know from here that the null space of a to the power 2k is equal to the null space of a to the k, when k is the index of the matrix A. y is in the null space of a to the k. And if y is in the null space of a to the k, then a to the power k times y is the all zero vector and x is the O0 vector. We have just proved that if there is a vector in the intersection of the range of a to the k and the null space of a to the k, it must be the O0 vector and nothing else. The intersection between these two subspaces, when k is the index of a, is the trivial intersection, the O0 vector. Because of the rank nullity theorem, we know that the dimension of the range of a to the k plus the dimension of the null space of a to the k is equal to n. And now we are saying that these two subspaces only have the O0 vector in their intersection. This means that R of A to the K and null space of A to the K partition the n-dimensional space. Every vector in the n-dimensional space can be uniquely expressed as the sum of two vectors. One of them is in this subspace, the range of A to the power K, and the other is in that subspace, the null space of A to the K. The direct sum of these two subspaces gives the n-dimensional space. Suppose that we take this as our starting point, that there is some k at which this becomes true. Above, we have shown that if the range of a to the k becomes equal to the range of a to the k plus 1, then we get this result here. Now we show the converse. Take x in the range of a to the k. There exists y such that a to the ky is equal to x. Y can be uniquely written as the sum of two vectors. One of them is in the null space of A to the K, and the other is in the range of A to the K. Y2 is in the null space, implying that A to the K times Y2 is the O0 vector. Y1 is in the range, then there exists vector Z such that A to the KZ is equal to Y1. X is A to the K times Y. This is A to the K times Y1 plus Y2. A to the k times y2 is the O0 vector because y2 is in the null space of A to the k. What remains is A to the k times y1. But y1, which is in the range of A to the k, can be written as A to the k times z. Then A to the k times y1 is A to the 2k times z. A to the k y1 is A to the ky is equal to x. x can be written as A to the power 2k times vector z, x is in the range of a to the power 2k. We start with x in the range of a to the k, x must be in the range of a to the power 2k. The range of a to the 2k contains, by this derivation, the range of a to the power k. We know that generally, the ranges are the same or are shrinking. Here we have a to the power k plus 1, here we have a to the power 2k, and k plus 1 is less than or equal to 2k for every positive integer k. The range of a to the k plus 1 contains the range of a to the 2k. But now we have this inclusion. The range of a to the 2k contains the range of a to the k. So this subspace contains that subspace. But generally, we have that the range of a to the k contains the range of a to the k plus 1. Then these two subspaces are the same. And by our previous result, the range stops shrinking. Concurrent with that, the null space stops growing.